Hi, you're listening to She Shield, your one-stop pod for all topics personal safety. I'm your host, Sophia, and my goal is to help educate women and men on concealed carry, martial arts, and all topics self-defense. Today, we have Lisa Hamilton, a fellow woman in the gun industry who is making a difference one woman at a time or one person at a time. Uh, Lisa is a certified firearms instructor, a girl and a gun chapter facilitator, a kickboxing instructor, and more. So I would love for you, Lisa, to just go ahead and talk about yourself. This is your moment. All righty. Wow. This is so exciting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so happy to be here. Um, well, where do I begin? I guess from the very beginning. Um, I'm originally from, <laughs> from Southern Ooh. California. So the firearms industry was something that was kind of new to me when I moved here to Tennessee, which is where I live now. Um, we don't have a lot of guns in Southern California, or at least not where I'm from. So I never experienced any of it, but I moved here for college, for undergrad, totally by myself, all the way across the country. And mm. I started to kind of become aware of my own personal safety. And I live in a part of Tennessee that is not necessarily the safest place on the planet to live. Not going to lie. My mom, yeah, my mom, she still lives in Southern California and she's the best ever. She will text me though and be like, I just saw a news article about someone being brutally murdered three miles from me. I'm like, okay, mom. Yeah, that's horrific. Thank you so much. Right, for guns are loaded. <laughs> yeah, like I'm, I'm okay. But you know, for a while when I first moved here, I didn't, I didn't really feel competent or comfortable in how to protect myself. Um, I used to be a waitress, and I would walk late at night to my car, cash tips on me, and I was like, I don't tis, know, tis. you know. Just kidding. <laughs> tis, no tis, shaming yeah. here. <laughs> if somebody <laughs> tried to approach me or attack me or rob me right now I honestly just don't know what I would do so I'm sure we'll go into it but that is what sparked me to wander into my local gun range one day and beg for help (laughs) and to teach me things and my life has completely 180 since it is now like the biggest part of my life it is my biggest hobby my biggest passion I love it so much so yeah it's been a really fun journey (laughs) It's amazing. And you're like, what, a student in something? I forgot what that is. What is it? Yes, like I'm actually I'm in. So yeah, I completed my bachelor's here in Jackson <laughs> um, in biology and psychology. And I'm currently in occupational therapy school getting my doctorate. So it's woo, oh, a lot yeah. of stuff. <laughs> Just trying to set you up. <laughs> you're incredible. Holy shit. Because some, I don't know, man, like, Doing all that at once is just so impressive. I I feel like it's easy when you're in it. Like, you can't see it as well. But, I mean, wow. Like I equal parts, like, thrive under pressure. Like, I like having – I've always been the kind of person that just piles things onto my plate because I actually work really well under stress and pressure. But at the same time, you do sometimes hit points where, like, I'm just exhausted. <laughs> So it's balancing that is always interesting, but I actually really enjoy the, um, healthcare firearms, totally separate industries balance almost because I do have people that are, um, in my program also that work, you know, in the healthcare industry and to go from working healthcare all day, every day to doing healthcare related school, all night, every night. Um, I feel like it gets to be a lot. I really, really enjoy being able to, I work at a local gun range now, the one that taught me everything I know. So, um, I really like being able to work there all day, every day and be around guns and teach people to shoot and teach classes and lessons and do that really like fun. I call it my hobby job. Like it's that thing that I just love and I'm super passionate about. And I love my OT stuff too, but to have something that's totally separate, um, to get to do that and then go and do my schoolwork. I think it helps a lot with keeping me balanced. 
Yeah, absolutely. I also, I forgot to mention you're a freaking friend of mine. What the hell? I'm so <laughs> used to like, introducing people and their, like their credentials. Uh, I forgot to talk about like who you are to me. You're a dear, dear friend. Um, I, I'm sorry. I didn't say that before people. Um, absolutely. Just it's crazy. The first time Lisa and I met, first of all, we're the same height, right? You're like, what are you I about shoes? <laughs> Um, I you think five, completely nine, flat footed. I'm like five ten, maybe five ten and a half. But five, yeah, ten. okay. I'm right up, like coming up on five ten without shoes on. If I'm like, like from like stuff we done in the kinesiology lab with like that per- that awesome like wall measure that like slides down to like accurate one, I'm like right up on five ten. So yeah, when you approached me, I was like, yes, I'm so excited, like a tall queen. Um, I don't get me wrong. I love my, my shorter friends. Nothing is wrong with them. They're perfect. I love looking like right at you and like hitting you <laughs> eye to eye. And then I think we, we ran into each other. I, I came to see you after I trained, um, at TFI and, you were wearing like boots and you were taller than me. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, it was so <laughs> weird. You am so used to being the tallest woman in the room. So first, sorry to go off on that stuff, but um, <laughs> no, Hey. And then after that, like our personalities were like crazy similar and like felt like I was looking into a mirror and I was like, it was weird. I like, we have a lot in common and I'm so glad I met you. Um, <laughs> part of like switching my journey from, <laughs> doing what I did to now is like the people I've met and you're the first person that comes to mind. So it's been really great being your friend and an honor to learn from you. Uh, Lisa is actually the person I went to, to teach me how to get into the gun industry. Um, there are a few other awesome women that have helped me like Tatiana Whitlock and Justine Williams. They were also very helpful. So shout out to them, but Lisa really held my hand through the way and um, helped me get my gear together. You helped me put my belt together. Like yeah, everything nothing, from the beginning. like an esteemed C-class shooter to teach you how to get oh, into USPSA. Dude, you, um, you've no. been training for how long? Training like in general? Uh, no. So, well, actually let's actually talk about that. So like how long have you been shooting? How long have you been teaching and how long have you been competing? That's okay. Timeline in my head. Let's right. see. Do okay. It, do shooting. It. I believe I took my very first like shot, um, February of 2019. So that was kind of when wow. I walked into the, the range. Um, I wandered on into a introduction to handguns class and I was like, oh, oh yeah, it definitely was. It was February because I think around Christmas or I turned 21 in October, so I think that, like, Christmas, I bought myself a handgun, which was so, you know, I did that thing where I go into the gun store, and I've never shot a gun before, and I'm like, wow, what gun should I get? And they're like, I don't know. (laughs) What one do you like? (laughs) And I'm like, I've never shot. And they're like, oh, you should get, like, a revolver. And I was like, no, I don't really want a revolver. Um, What about that one? That one's pretty. And they're like, sure, yeah, you know, it was pretty and expensive. So they're like, yeah, that one, buy it. And I ended up hating it. Uh, like, <laughs> Wait, hold on. You have to tell us what it is. Okay, but I feel bad because I feel like a lot of people like it. But it was, um, oh. no, no, it's fine. It well, actually, it's split. It's, there, so. you know? <laughs> it's the Kimber Micro 9. Okay, and it's funny because I'm in, I'm in, like, <laughs> groups on Facebook you know, where uh, people talk about what they carry and there's like all these people that are like, I carry the Kimber Micro 9 every day. I love it. And I'm like, do you shoot it? Like, have you, do you go to the range and train with this gun? Because it's not a bad gun. Like, I do not want to say anything bad about Kimber, like the company, the quality of the gun. It is just such a small subcompact nine millimeter that is a nine millimeter. So, you know, um, it has quite a bit of recoil, um, where the safety, it's like a, almost like, like a 1911 style, like little gut, you know, it's got, that's actually what I just (laughs) thought. I looked at the picture Mm -hmm. and I was like, is this a 1911? Like a mini 1911? Yeah, a little one. And so it's got an external (laughs) thumb safety and just where my hand sat on the gun, like when I would grip, like the thumb safety would cut into my, (laughs) my thumb. Uh, so yeah, it would get to the point. And I like to 
Fun fact about me, spoiler alert, I really like to train. Like, I think that the actually going and shooting guns part of shooting and carrying is super, super important. So, um, like, I would go train a lot. Like, I'd probably, this was back, you know, 2019, ammo was a little bit cheaper. So, I would go right, shoot right. a box of um, 50 or 100 rounds multiple times a week, like four to five times a week because I was first getting into it. And taking that gun to the range and shooting 50 to 100 rounds through it simply is not super pleasant. Like, I would actually be bleeding by the time I was done from where the safety would cut into my thumb. So, yeah, it was it was something. But that being said, yeah, try to try, to try guns before you buy them. <laughs> um, but, yes, yeah, so I yes. did that. I purchased it. Um, I had no idea what to do with it. It sat... Let's see. I think I purchased it right around the end of December, beginning of January, and it sat in its box until February. I saw the ad for the new handgun shooter introduction handgun class. I was like, okay, yeah, like I should, I should go do this. And my fiance, oh my gosh, he's wonderful. He's the kind of guy who's been around guns his whole life, though. Like he comes from a big like hunting family, and oh, nice. he was all like. I can teach you how to shoot it. Like, you don't need to go to that class. And I was like, I appreciate that so much. Like, I kind of, I don't know, I get nervous around you. Like, I feel like I would like to go to, you know, a stranger, like an actual structured class. And that's funny because we have this rule at the range that if you share DNA or saliva with the person, you should not be teaching them how to shoot. (laughs) (laughs) I love that so much. I've never heard it said that way. I love that. Yeah. It's a great rule. It is so true. And I am so happy that I went to somebody that I do not share DNA or saliva with. Um, So I went to my first intro class. Yeah. I was terrified, like shaking, just absolutely mortified. Um, But, you know, I got through it. I learned a lot about how guns operate, how they work, how to handle them safely. And I think it was great that I had never had the opportunity to develop any bad habits (laughs) safety-wise before I learned the proper way to do things. Mm, Um, That was great. And then... I could I could talk about this exact topic for so so long, so I'm just gonna try to speed it up no, a little I bit. Just, <laughs> no, 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 no. This topic is great. No one has come on the podcast and talked about their first experience, especially as a woman shooting. Um, well, I know uh, Kristen talked about kind of like being taught by her family, you know, and then later in life seeing that there was more to it and needing more instruction. But for someone to just like wander onto a range and like have the struggle of like, should I just let my you know, fiance teach me, or should I just go to this class? I love that you're talking about this. So please share. Okay. Well, great. (laughs) Then in that case, I have a habit. I I talk a lot. Like, um, so at any point you need to be like, Lisa, shut up. Just, just tell me to shut up. This Um, this is about you, girl. Yeah. So I, I took that class. Um, shout out to Chip Holland at the range. He's my boss now, but he was the first person who ever, um, taught me how to shoot a gun um and I was so scared and shaking and it was very just like patient and kind and helpful and by the end of it I was like wow you know that was that was kind of fun like I I actually enjoyed that like that was cool so while I was there taking that class I signed up to come in and take the carry permit class um the next week because I was like okay um cool. Now we need to, you know, get into the actually carrying it part. So I took the carry right. permit class and fun fact about me, I'm super lame. I love to follow rules. Like I'm a huge rule follower. I always have been, um, and in carry permit class, I remember Chip saying, you know, not that it's like a hard and fast rule, but he was like, if you're going to carry a firearm, like if you are going to carry this on your body, as the way that you intend to protect your life, if it comes down to it, you need to make sure that you train with it at a minimum, Mm -hmm. like once a month, but like you need to be comfortable, like handling and shooting this gun. Um, like when you are in fear for your life is not the time you want to be figuring it out and taking the carry permit class, Tennessee state mandates like an eight hour course. 
that does not make you <laughs> an expert. In fact, most of the course is learning about what you're criminally and civilly liable for. It's not even like teaching you how to shoot. You're expected to be able to pass the shooting test when you get there. So, you know, taking an eight yes. hour course is not like that was my training. Okay. I'm good. Like, um, thank you so- for saying that. That's like, that's a really good point to bring up. A lot of women write me and they're like, I want to learn how to shoot. I, should I take my concealed carry permit class? And it's like, okay, so let's, let's actually like talk about that. Why don't you go to a class first and then the permit class? So that way you're not like trying to learn everything at once. I, yeah. I'm glad you said that. That's good. Yeah. Job. It is a really, it, it does vary state by state, but the way it's structured in Tennessee is you learn the basics of like side alignment stance grip, you know, well, here's how you hold it. Here's how you don't like shoot yourself. (laughs) Don't hurt yourself. But as far as like the fundamentals of like precision and marksmanship, like you don't dive into that in that class. And it's a really long class to take to fail the shooting portion at the end, because in Tennessee, if you fail the shooting portion, you have to take the whole day long class all over again. So, um, it's good to (laughs) be comfortable that you can pass before you sit in the classroom all day long. But after taking that, I'm totally calling myself out here. It is not the most difficult shooting course of fire. Um, it, it's, it's not, it's not that hard. Um, I barely passed when I took it. I want to say I <laughs> made it out of there with like, you need a 70, um, to pass. I think I scored, I don't know. I barely passed. I passed by like a couple points. Um, mm-hmm. and when I say that, you know, cause I teach that class now, <laughs> um, people are right, like, right are like oh wow like should you be telling us this and I'm like you know yeah I actually think it's important because in that moment I was like wow if I you know I am now well I guess you know you have to wait for your permit to come in the mail and everything but now I've I've passed like I submitted my certificate according to the state of Tennessee like I am a (laughs) holder of an enhanced handgun carry permit like I can yes. walk out of here mm-hmm. and like when I get my permit, you know, carry this firearm on my body to protect my life with. And I knew after taking that shooting portion that if I were under stress, say there's other people around, say like accuracy is important in this particular moment situation. Like I am not, I do not feel <laughs> like I could, you know, accurately make the shot I need to. So that actually kind of sparked me to start training. Um, I want to say after I took that class, I used to have a little lunch break at college for like two hours in the middle of the day um, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I would go to the range every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They had um, memberships, you know, the cheapest membership. And I was a broke college student. The cheapest membership was $20 a month. So like I paid my $20 a month. I would go there three times a week. And I would take those fundamentals that I learned in that very first class, you know, it wasn't anything super fancy, but it was the fundamentals of, you know, your trigger press, your breath control, your stance and your grip. And I took those things that I learned and I applied them when I shot in the range and just tried to really focus on incorporating those every single time the right way. And I shot three times a week for sometimes four times a week. I want to say like six, six or seven months. Like I just, I did it really diligently and I quickly applying those concepts, saw my groupings go from, you know, my Swiss cheese looking target where holes are just everywhere (laughs) to like they would shrink. And I, I got to the point where I was very, very consistently shooting very, very accurately. And I was like, wow, you know, the more kind of accurate you get, when you start to get better at things, I don't know. I'm motivated when I, when I start to get better at things, I'm like, wow, look at me. Like, (laughs) this is actually, yeah. Like it just, it almost becomes sports. Like, like it's like archery, but with the bullets, like, look at me, I can hit Mm -hmm. the bullseye whenever I want to, because I, I say, you know, against a machine, like in theory, if you line up your sights the way they should be lined up, and if you press your trigger, 
the way that you should, where you don't put any sort of external manipulation on the gun, moving it left or right, you know, jerking. If you just press the trigger smooth, straight through, in theory, if your sights are where they should be, the bullet should go where you want it to every single time. But what happens is we're human (laughs) and we breathe and we jerk and we anticipate and we start yanking our shots left and right and up and down and that's all human error. So when you start to learn how to like minimize that human error as much as possible, um, marksmanship gets like pretty fun. (laughs) Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that was, I guess, how I kind of got into it. And then... You asked me, like, a four-part question. It was, <laughs> how did you start? No, it's like, <laughs> well, how did you end up getting into competition shooting? Yes, that is actually a perfect segue. Um, <laughs> it really is because, like I said, I did so much standing and shooting, stationary, yes. on a range, bullseye, poking holes in paper. And so we let me tell yes. you, I got really good <laughs> at poking holes in paper and shooting bulls at like I am I am confident in saying that I can go into an indoor range and stand there and when I take my time and I breathe I can group you know a quarter size group at I don't know 10 15 yards maybe farther I can group probably like a dime size group at three to five like I marksmanship when I can take my time and breathe, is really good, okay? Absolutely. So in a self-defense situation, and I'm going to preface this by saying I've never been in a self-defense situation where I needed to draw my gun or use one, you know. I've not experienced that. But from what I have heard, (laughs) you are not going to be stationary, standing, calm, breathing, taking your time because you're freaking out because someone's trying to kill you. So I was like, you know, I think marksmanship and being able to like really, really, really work on those like marksmanship fundamentals is super important. I think it's so important, but it's, it's, it's not necessarily the most like practical when it comes to self-defense because shooting under pressure and speed and movement is a whole different ball game. And I'm so happy that I started with those really, really, really solid fundamentals, but um, (laughs) competition was the closest thing I could get to mimicking that kind of stress factor um, that I imagine I might experience in an actual self-defense situation. And this is a whole, I'm sure you've heard many comments, like this is a whole debate in the gun industry of, um, (laughs) you probably have experience with this, but like competition shooting, is it actually practical for self-defense? We can go. (laughs) Yes, please. I haven't actually heard the the conversation about it. I've heard that I will hear conversations about it, but I think I, at this point, I, before I even give people a chance, I'm like, I'm trying to bridge the gap between those two. And it's almost like you can't fight that. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know when, when someone like tells you they're trying to bridge the gap between a and B of two very like practical practices, it's almost like it shuts someone down. But then again, I don't think I've talked enough about it. Like I'm super new to it. So it's probably Mm -hmm. just that I'm a novice and I haven't had the opportunity to hear people go on, but please tell me what they're saying. (laughs) Cause tell me the BS. It's funny. I I like that. (laughs) I like that you mentioned being a novice. Like I too am a novice competition shooter. Um, it's actually funny because when I told, oh, I think it was one of my coworkers, like, oh, yeah, you know, um, this, like, Instagram friend of mine has reached out, and I've been, like, you know, trying to give her tips and help her get into competition shooting. They're, like, you, like, (laughs) helping them into, okay, (laughs) fuck that. You're the best person to give me tips. You know what I mean? Because I'm not, I am not a, we'll go, so we we both currently are competing, 
computing, competing in USPSA. Um, I am computing. <laughs> computing. Yeah, my brain's competing. I am not. Hey, a- we have to put our ID in mm-hmm. on the computer. That is true. Plus, we are computing. That is true. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I completely agree. Um, I'm not a grandmaster. <laughs> I am not a master. I am not even in the A or B class. I am currently proudly Almost sitting at there. C class. Um, <laughs> I am not like the best of the best USPSA shooter in the world. I'm not even close. But what I think is really helpful is the fact that you don't you don't have to be incredible to be able to um, help other people into it. You know, I'm never, and you had mentioned I'm a firearms instructor. I am not a firearms Mm -hmm. instructor who's going to, I don't do classes on, you know, competition, movement, and speed techniques. Like, that is not what I, that's not what I teach because I'm not super expertly proficient in that area yet. That is not my uh, forte. I really like to help people who may not be as comfortable or newer or trying to learn new skills or apply new skills in a different way. I really like to help with that transition because I think it's super important. And, you know, I'm not going to get out there and tell you how to shoot a bill drill. And I'm like, I don't even know what a super competitive, competitive bill drill time is. I don't know. A second. <laughs> I'm not gonna, yeah, right. I was, I was going to say like anywhere from 0.9 to like, yeah, like I'm not yeah. going to, that is not what I'm here to teach you. I mean, I'm going to help you gather the confidence to come to a match, you know, gather gear, all of that. But that being said, competition was my way to take those really important fundamental skills that I had learned and apply them to moving and shooting. Um, Oh yeah. And we were talking about the debate. So the debate in the cliff notes version is that USPSA is really gamey and it can be, you know, there are rules and technicalities that are not tactically correct. You know, if you, I have a coworker who um, used to work at tactical response and he trained there for a very, very long time. And the way that he, and he'll come shoot USPSA with us, the way that he moves throughout a stage and, like his movement, his gun handling, it's it's different because it's more tactically based. Whereas you'll do things, people that are really, really, I don't know, strict USPSA shooters are going to do things more gamey. You know, you don't always, it's faster to not shoot from behind cover and to, um, I, <laughs> I got DQ'd once from a match. <laughs> And it was um, during a reload. And I remember being, I mean, it was very fair, obviously. I definitely, I, I broke the 180, but it was like a, it was like a very tactically correct reload, you know, threw the gun up in my workspace. I broke the 180 angled up, you know, if you took a line shooting out of the barrel of my gun and went up, 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 like, yes, it broke the 180, but it wasn't like a, um, you know, I swung it around and pointed it at the audience, <laughs> a 180 break. And right. I remember my boss watching it because I, I sent him a uh, chip. I sent him match videos throughout the day. He was like, that was a great run. He's like, what happened? And I was like, oh, I broke the 180 on that reload. And he's all, that reload was beautiful. And it's just funny because, you know, you have to be able to separate <laughs> what's correct tactically and what's correct gamey like you're gonna game things to go faster and do better in uspsa matches that like you would not be or you probably shouldn't do you know if you're in an actual gunfight and once again i have not been in a gunfight <laughs> but um well, sometimes there's like you don't have turn- to be just on it in my opinion you know <laughs> what i mean you. Like, yeah, thank you for saying that yeah absolutely um, i, I uh, <laughs> Sometimes, like with turn and draws, for example, like you're you you turn gun side, like in USPSA, so you don't break the 180. But sometimes, like position wise, like that is not how you would turn to draw your firearm in a gunfight, or so I hear. All that being said, I think it is very, I don't say easy, but super doable to separate USPSA um, competition, gamey shooting from real world self-defense scenarios. And I think that the 
practice that you get shooting matches is incredible. I mean, the people that I compete with at USPSA, I mean, the amount of reps that we get drawing and firing, shooting quickly, you know, shooting silhouette shaped targets in, um, you know, a smaller mass zone under stress. Yeah. I think that that is so important. And people that are, there's going to be so many people that are going to sit on the couch and be like, that's not practical self-defense shooting. You're learning bad habits that you're probably blowing them away in reps and practice. Like I guarantee that half the people that have stuff to say about the fact that competition shooting isn't tactically correct, go to the range, like twice a year, (laughs) you know, it's a hundred percent. I, if you 100%. can take, and you see that, right? Like <laughs> you work in the environment where you see that happen. So you're oh, not just yeah. like, think you're not just like predicting you're right. You're talking about your experiences here. Yes. Yeah. I work in um, a gun range. It is called the range <laughs> yes. Jackson, Tennessee's premier indoor yes. shooting and training facility. <laughs> Um, yes. <laughs> people will come in and we have like a safety waiver, you know, that people fill out before they shoot and we ask them to rate their experience, um, like with different firearms. So it'll be like, what's your handgun experience? What's your rifle experience? Shotgun experience. Huh. And the number of people that will rate themselves expert, expert, expert in like every category and then go out there and like muzzle themselves and just, I mean, do dumb things like are gripping the the gun. Oh yeah. I I sent Sophia a video of, (laughs) (laughs) I was on the range, I was ROing and somebody like the magazine was out of the AR. He took the magazine out, did not understand ARs well enough to know that there was still a round chambered and swung it around and pointed at my leg before I, you know, grabbed it and <laughs> moved it back in the same position. But stuff like that happens. You did such a good job too. Yeah. Thank you. You kind of, you, you learn when you're <laughs> out there every day, kind of how to spot like, oh, this person's about to point a gun at me. Like they're about to swing this around and <laughs> point it in my hand. And it happens a lot. And I, you know, I've worked with people who get really angry about it. Like it makes them really mad when people point guns at them, which I get, like, it's kind of scary, but you have to also look at it from a lens. Like a lot of people do not know better. Like they're not intentionally trying to, and it doesn't make it any more okay or any less dangerous, but, um, screaming at them and making them never want to come back to a range again because they feel so bad that they like did something wrong is not helpful for anyone because they're (laughs) never going to learn the correct skills and you just made them feel like garbage. So (laughs) absolutely. Yeah, there is that, but that's why I got into it because I wanted to take, there's not a lot of movement that can be done in an indoor range. And if that's all you have available to you, you can do a lot of really good practice there. You can work on your speed there, but as far as like, you know, really good moving and shooting reps, like that's not something that you can really get in that kind of environment. And we don't have a whole lot of other ranges out here. We have one other like outdoor range, but they're members only. And I'm a broke grad student. So like, I can't pay for a whole other outdoor gun range membership as someone who works at a range (laughs) and has like, I can't justify that in my brain (laughs) to spend. Right. You have to survive. Um, Right. But competitions like you don't have to be a great competitive shooter to show up to them anybody can show up i showed up like never really (laughs) yeah you did and you've been my unclassified ass no you've been doing amazing and that's the beautiful thing about it is it looks kind of scary and intimidating but you can show up airily knowing what you're doing i remember showing up with like like inside the waistband, like floppy mag pouches and like clip on that really from the Amazon and like 
Um, I don't know. I think I came to my first one. Maybe it was like a leather, like outside the waistband holster that I got for Christmas. <laughs> like, you know, it just like whatever gear I had. And it's not like it was unsafe gear. It just wasn't like race competition gear, but it right, was right. So bad. Um, and I remember showing up with what I had and it just being okay. Like I obviously didn't do well, but you know, you really just kind of have to show up and do it. <laughs> And you'll realize people aren't, well, at least the people I shot with, they're not mean. Like, they're not going to shame you out of there. Most right. people in the firearms industry, I feel like, want to see more people feeling comfortable and confident in the firearms industry. So they, I mean, they hyped me up, you know, they helped me, they showed me the ropes, walked me through things. And I really soon, like, just fell in love with it. It's so fun. It's, Competing is now my favorite hobby. I do it. I try to do it almost every weekend. Like it, it's so much fun. And I feel like my skills have just like increased exponentially since I've started. You know, I went from being able to really accurately poke holes in paper to being able to, I'm not super fast yet, but being able to pretty accurately poke holes in silhouette style targets rather quickly while moving. So, you know, Absolutely. It's been really awesome to see how my own skills have developed through that experience. And yeah, super into it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So the first time I wanted to learn about it, I, I wrote Justine Williams. She had come on the the podcast and she talked about how anyone can do it at any age. And I just remember after that episode, I was like, I need to get into this now. Like I need to get into it now. And she told me like, just go to a competition and walk around and talk to people. And I was like, fuck that. Like, <laughs> I was like, I don't want to go do that. But what's great is like, that's what I ended up doing. Luckily I had you, right. You invited me and well, did I invite myself? I don't know. We'll get to that later. But <laughs> you were like, I'm competing. And I was like, where I'm coming. And <laughs> I think I was like, wait, are you okay with that? Word, let's coming? do it. <laughs> Word. So I was really lucky to, to have a contact, right. To not just show up and kind of wander around aimlessly. But the more I did, um, I got to like, I think, let me back up a little bit because you and I obviously were very clearly aware of who the other was. I think, you know, your friends weren't as worried about talking to me, but, um, now that I've come to more competitions as, as a competitor and in quotation marks, um, you know, novice competitor, I've talked to these men and women more and what Justine said and what you you're saying is absolutely true. Um, they are very kind, you know, they're willing to talk. They were there at their first match, you know, as well before, you know, before you, and they know those feelings of stress and anxiety, just like anyone. I think there are a few people in the community that are not that way. And, um, of course, you know, you can't really know who they are until you have a bad experience. So it's one of those yeah. things like proceed <laughs> a little bit of caution and no, it's not your fault because, um, we've talked about this just, you know, between us over pizza, but like, there are some people in the industry who are so focused on, you know, their status that they don't think anyone else should come in and, claim status yeah. it's, it's an interesting dynamic <laughs> we won't say names you know but they they're they're there they're out there hopefully not locally I mean have you had any experiences like that where like no the only like local, local, negative the only negative local experiences I've had are I always joke because the number of times that I'm like oh, men you know as a woman in the firearms industry um yep. because Mm -hmm. I, I love men. I do very, very much. I'm engaged to a wonderful man. You know, <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a dude Same hater. Here. Um, but <laughs> sometimes men say the darndest things and I could honestly yes. do a whole two hour long episode on just things that men have said to me in the gun store. Like, Oh my sweet goodness. Like it is. Jesus Christ. Wow. It is absolutely wild. But, um, you know, at matches, I remember, like, I would show up, and I'd been to a few, like, I'm not, I'm not new to shooting, um, I mean, I was relatively overall, but I'm, I would consider myself, like, fairly experienced, this is also a whole nother tangent on how you classify yourself, like, if I were filling out our range right. waiver, I would still not put myself as an expert in any category, like, intermediate at best, you know, because 
you're always learning in the farms industry. Like, and people that go, Oh, I'm an instructor. I'm an expert in this, this, this. Okay. I'm going to tell you as a firearms instructor who has all the papers that tell me I'm a firearms instructor, it's not that impressive or cool to be a firearms instructor. (laughs) What is impressive and cool is to be a firearms instructor that is a dedicated, lifelong student of firearms, you know, in the industry, an instructor that takes that so seriously that they continue to take classes from other instructors and continue to learn and develop their skills and take their training very seriously because actually getting the certification isn't that, (laughs) I mean, all I can say is, you know, the people I've taken classes, you know, the instructor course where you get certified with people that I would never take a class from or suggest anyone take a class from. Um, So it's really important that you find an instructor that is actually dedicated to being a safe, competent instructor that develops their skills too. And never thinks that they know everything because they're constantly learning from other people. But anyway, that was a tangent. Um, we were saying, no, I, I wasn't, it. It was you said. I wasn't seriously, I mean it, I wasn't new. Um, so I'd go to these matches and men would be like, come here, sweetheart. Let me show you how to walk a stage properly. And not in a helpful way. That was like, because I, I'm not like snobby, you know, if somebody who knows more than me oh, wants to show me how to walk a stage, there's this one, um, we have a lot of like GMs randomly here in Jackson, Tennessee, like it's kind of wild, but like the number of like really talented USPSA shooters that we have here locally is absolutely bonkers. And they will take me and walk me through stages and hold my hand. And it's just the most helpful thing in the world. But when people approach you and they're like, so condescending. <laughs> I'm sorry. The, okay. the face you made, like when they walk up, like I, I if you that, start that was really off by like saying the words "sweetheart," let me show you how it's done in any sort of like combination of those words. I'm immediately like, Ew. <sighs> <laughs> okay, and. I feel like the most, yeah, the only poor experiences I've had vocally are just people very obviously, like, um, assuming I don't know anything and thinking that I want them to tell me how to do things, even though, like, a lot of times things that they show me will be completely incorrect. So it's just kind of being able to, like, like I'm never rude about it. I'm just going to be like, wow, Thank you so much. I'll be using absolutely none of that, but I appreciate it. Um, Absolutely. No, and I'm all for people like coming up to you at matches and trying to help pull. Just, just don't, just don't be condescending and creepy about it. (laughs) Yeah, there's like a vibe. Like, like I've said this before on TikTok, and I got a lot of uh, the word I'm thinking about is slack. What's the word? Shame. um, I know the S word. Shit. Um, <laughs> that is one of them. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, like, it was the 80s and like the 90s is like flack. Like, isn't that a thing? He caught a lot of flack. Is flack a thing? Is that a word? Flack. I'm sorry. I'm Googling I just it right now. my microphone. Hopefully, no one Keep heard talking, that. But I'm going to Google the word flack no, because now I'm afraid that it's like some obscene it. word that. You know, if it is, it's it was in, said in innocent with innocent flack. attention. So. Oh, that is not even. What is flack? Ah, ah, ah. What does flack mean in slang? Criticism. If you get a lot of flack from someone, they criticize you severely. There we go. So I got a lot of flack. flack. Yeah, on like, well, you don't know everything. Or like, oh, okay, 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 stuck up. Like, and it's different because there's there's more to it. There's more context than just like I didn't I didn't want this person to help me, right? It's like a vibe you get that this person is approaching you for their own personal gain. It's very different. And I got I actually felt that on my first um at my first match from someone. And I ended up not being in the same squad as them. It was like way before I got there, like two hours early because I was nervous. And I walked around and like some guy ran into me and I just like his vibe was off. And I remember thinking, like, you know what? I don't really want this guy to help me. Like 
it doesn't feel genuine. Um, everyone else that day that helped me stage plan, because I was like, what the fuck is this, right? Like, I was like, wait, do we shoot the white targets, you know, kind of thing? Like, I was that new to it. Those are no shoots, by the way, for people. Yeah, <laughs> like, what the fuck? And you don't shoot, um, say, don't shoot the white targets. Don't shoot the white targets. Don't shoot Get the black targets. From this episode, <laughs> like, yeah, don't shoot the white targets. <laughs> and don't shoot the black targets. Right. <laughs> Exactly. Like I just, yeah, it's all about, it's almost like their intentions are clear. And at this point, I'm sorry, but if you're a woman who survived this long in the world, you have a pretty refined gut. Like, you know (laughs) what people's intentions are pretty early on. It's almost a superpower. And some people don't at this point. And that's, you know, they're still building theirs. But um, I feel like I've been in this space long enough, especially in the martial arts space since I was 13, where like, those intentions are like auras to me and they, I can read them. They're like, you know, that it's like someone walks up with a big splotch of color behind them and you're kind of like, ah, no, thank you. You know? And you're allowed to say that. Like, it doesn't mean you're not appreciative. It just means you don't want that particular person to help you. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, uh, fun little story went to a range. So, you know, I'm from California, so I went back to a range in Southern California and the um, range safety officer out there, his name was actually Chad, which I think is funny because, you know, he, he did such a Chad thing to <laughs> oh do. <my> like, <laughs> Okay, pause. My fiance wants to name our firstborn that, and I can't tell Chad? if he's joking, but. No. Yeah, and I know he's hearing this right now because he edits all the audio. It's not happening, Caleb. So, <laughs> yeah, and this is case in point. Tell me, I know it's bad, so let's go, let's go. Let's yeah, this yeah, candle. yeah. So Chad comes up to me, and um, so I've never, I've never shot at this range before. Every range has different rules, right? Okay, so usually at our range, like we right. have markings on the wall at three, five, seven, ten, fifteen, twenty, and twenty-five yards, and they have the same markings on their wall. And a lot of times, I'll fire off a couple rounds at three yards, like three or four rounds, just little warm-up shots. It's almost like a little confidence boost. Like you know, I know damn well that I can hit the bullseye easily exactly where I I know at three yards I can put those four rounds in the same hole so it's a nice little warm-up to make sure you know my breath is there my trigger press is good all that so um I put out the target to the three yard marking on the wall and I pick up the gun and Chad comes up to me he's like whoa 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 and he like literally grabs the gun out of my hand like reaches over the top grabs the slide like he eats this gun out of my hand and is like have you ever shot here before and I was like no I have not um he goes first of all like you cannot shoot at three yards and I'm like okay sorry he's like all targets have to be at at least past five yards like, all right, that's great. You know, a sign would have been helpful, but like, why do you even have a three yard marking yeah. on the wall? Like, whatever. Okay, that's fine. Um, so sorry. I didn't know that. Thank you. And he goes, you know, just like literally stands in front of me, like yeets me out of the booth, like, it's like, let me show you how it's done, and just kind of like holds it and starts, but he actually shoots five rounds of my ammo, like the ammo that I brought to shoot, like shows me, shows me. I'm doing quotation marks for those of you that aren't watching my face. Um, shows me how it's done. Um, and his shots are not impressive and blah, 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 whatever. He's like, okay, you know, eventually now let me see you try. And so like I shoot and it was good and he's all, Oh, he goes, so are you law enforcement or military? (laughs) And I was like, (laughs) Both, bitch. <laughs> what the hell? Well, I mean, I, it was just such an <laughs> uncomfortable experience. Like, I remember I just you. being, like, from the moment he walked up, I was like, oh, my God, I already know I'm just going to, like, hate everything about this conversation that's about to happen. And I was so correct. Like, I hated it more than I thought I would hate it. But, yeah, that Dude, was... it's a vibe. It was, it was a vibe. It was a vibe that was, like, I have testosterone, therefore... I am superior to you in all things firearms. And I was like, okay. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. 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 That sucks. Yeah. So much fun. We love those experiences. I, I actually sometimes no, it's will really interesting. at the range I work at, <laughs> like on my days off in normal clothes. And I will still have people yeah. like come into my booth before I even take my <sighs> things out and be like, 
do you need me to show you how to load your gun? I'm like, I literally am the manager here. <laughs> like, oh. oh my gosh. That's, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Do they do that to like other men? No, no probably oh, not. Not to make this thing. a. So I am, I am a. Um, sexism yeah. argument. No, no, it's fucking no, this. It, it, it is something <laughs> that I don't even think a lot of people, it's almost how they were raised. So I don't even think that they're aware that they do it. Yes. But um, yes. I am one of our managers there at the range. And the number of times that I will be the manager on duty working with another coworker, and I'm not saying I'm the manager on duty, like I have superior knowledge to my coworkers. Like all my coworkers are amazing. They yeah. know just as much, if not more than I do. We are all perfectly capable of answering questions. But the number of people that will mm-hmm. like go up to my male coworker, it is almost, I would say, I can't say 10 times out of 10 because I'm sure every now and then someone comes up to me, but 9.8 times out of 10, like if someone has a question, they are going to go, even if my male coworker is busy doing something with another person, they will go wait in line to ask the man something before coming to me. And my coworkers are awesome. Like I could not love them more. They do this really funny thing where when that happens, <laughs> um, they go, even if they totally know the answer to the question, they go, huh, I don't, I don't know. Lisa, can, can you help me? Like, can, can you answer this question for me? Like, they totally have my oh back. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. They're, they're so funny. Like, but they yes. do that all the time. <laughs> they're like, Lisa, Lisa, do you know the answer? I'm like, why, yes, I do. Thank you for asking. <laughs> but they totally have my back. It, it's just mm-hmm. it's, it's interesting. And it's funny to note because, you know. Oh, yeah. And, and I don't even think people realize they do it half the time. Like, they're just like, oh, that's a dude. He knows the answer to the question, but right. we can do, obviously. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, that's totally fair. I feel like this is definitely something that needs to be kind of talked about. So thank you for being vulnerable <laughs> and sharing those experiences. Oh, I'm happy sure. to. I have so um, many and they're so funny. So <laughs> yeah, we've, we have had some fun talking about, uh, kind of like some of the things men say in this industry. Um, and I I have had amazing men along my path, like push me and teach me and be completely respectful of my boundaries. Um, I've also had the complete opposite of that. So, um, you know, it's one of those things it, it needs to be talked about. And I like, that's part of why this podcast was started to talk about the things that are uncomfortable about being a woman in this, any self-defense industry, right. From jujitsu mm-hmm. all the way to, competition shooting, you know, there's always going to be that, this like stigma that we're undoing. Um, yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? And on that note, this podcast is so awesome. Like I, 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 I love Ooh. this like space that you've created here. I love the diversity and people that you have on the show. No, I, I mean, it. it's really, it's a really great resource. I mean, I love that it covers, you know, all like components of self-defense. It's not just like firearms or personal awareness, but you know, like martial arts and just mindset, mentality, fitness, like it's awesome. So you've created a really awesome thing and I'm so happy to be a part of it. (laughs) That means the world to me. Thank you. I'm glad to have you on here as a friend too. It's been, it's just, it's an easy flow. Not that I ever have really any difficulty flowing with people, but um, yeah, like I didn't feel nervous <laughs> until you said you were nervous. I was like, Shh. I'm not going to lie. Like part of me was like, I was, I waited until now to tell you, but I was like, wait, hold on. Now I'm kind of Yeah. Nervous. Sorry. In case you like, all don't know, no, I've been like shaking in my boots this whole time. <laughs> I'm Dude, not wearing boots. You I'm would pants, never but... fucking know. <laughs> you've done such a good job. Like the whole time you've been talking, I'm like, wow. Like you're so well-spoken. Um, I really thought I was until I listened to myself speak on this podcast, like looking back. And of course, like, I know, I know people have told me that I'm, I'm well-spoken even on the podcast. And like, I understand that. I just knew starting out, I would just like trip over myself constantly because I didn't want to give myself the time to think or speak like properly. So, um, Mm -hmm. definitely have come a long way, but I'm very impressed by you. This has been a really great experience. I do want to, before we end this episode for people that are wanting to get into the gun industry, I'd like us to talk about just some steps they can take to get, I'm sorry, not the gun industry, but competition. Um, and you helped me out with that so much. Um, I'll just start by saying definitely, um, make the practice score account. Uh, that's where all of the competitions are like 
it's like the the main platform for that and then yeah, find it's like, one it's like to a go... google for matches almost <laughs> like it is yes. yeah and if you don't know it's you can type in your r a c u t i s c o r e practice score That's i was so confident going into that i was like i know how to spell this in my head um Wait, it's it's two T's on the practice. Now, did I say P twice? P R A C T I S C O R E dot com. Crack I don't T know. score. I thought I heard T twice. Hmm. You know, if I were like That's definitely um one. former like law enforcement or military, I would have done the whole phonetic alphabet thing where I would have been like Alpha Charlie. <laughs> you Girl. know, but I, I don't Dude. I don't know the phonetic alphabet. I used to actually. I had to learn it in a speech class in the sixth grade, but oh, I forgot. Awesome. Yeah, so I, I used to know. I, mean, I do not I anymore. Alpha, beta, that, so you're good. Charlie, Delta, Epsilon. I don't know. Um, those are Greek letters. <laughs> anyway, isn't it um, Frank? No, that's Frank. <laughs> Frank. Who's Frank? No, no, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. I just know every time I spell my name, I always go S O as in Frank. I Foxtrot. I knew that. Is it really? <laughs> it okay. is. It is for sure. Um, <laughs> I just know there's going to be yes. like some like <laughs> military people listening to this and going like, oh my God, not in a bad way. I'm not saying that. It's just like, it's so second nature. <laughs> just like, At least like idiot. rolling their eyes. <laughs> right. Exactly. Hope your eyes are okay. Just kidding. Um, but yes, Lord, practice yeah. score count. You can type in your code and then find... Mm-hmm find a competition to kind of shadow and then what would you say like comes like next after yes so either if you have gear i okay i think going and watching a match is awesome i would encourage you to also if you have gear to bring it even if it's not like the latest and greatest and you may get there and not be like comfortable to shoot that day and that is fine but you might get there and it depends who you have at your local matches like who you have there running things but they might be so like welcoming and helpful and that you might be like oh wow you know I wish I had brought my stuff like they're making me feel like I can hop right in so I would say go to one show up if you have gear bring it but if you don't or you don't feel comfortable shooting that day, that is fine. I mean, just go watch and ask questions. You'll learn so much doing that. Um, after that, you know, <laughs> buying gear, um, you don't have to have, I always, I laugh at this because when I talk about the gear I have, I think when you, when you were asking me what gear to buy, I was like, this is what I have. And this is what the cool kids have. <laughs> like, I would always say that because not all my gear is like the latest, yes. greatest gear. I'd be like, oh, I have this core essentials battle belt. The cool kids have this like double alpha belt. And like, you you don't have to have like a specific brand or like the latest, greatest like gear to do this. Like I run my core essentials battle belt because I have their regular everyday carry belts and I love them. And, you know, I got their battle belt and like, I've never seen another person at a match wearing theirs, but like it works so well. Like I love it. Um, but all the right. super cool kids, they all have like the double alpha belts and whatever. And that's awesome too, you know, but you don't have to have like a specific brand or this or that to do well in these competitions or to shoot in them. Like, But I would definitely ask questions about what gear to buy, either find someone who appears to know what they're doing um, and have a good setup and ask questions um, about what kind of belt to get, you know, what mag pouches to get, what there's different rules if you're shooting USPSA versus IDPA on what types of magazine pouches you can have, where they can be placed. So Look at the rule book for your specific type of competition that you're trying to do um, and ask questions about, you know, what's compliant for USPSA versus IDPA and even what division you're in. That's a whole nother thing. But um, I shoot in carry optics. The reason I shoot in carry optics is because the gun I had was carry optics. <laughs> um, I had a SIG P320 um, with a red dot on it, and that falls into the carry optics division. I didn't like go buy a specific competition gun. Like that's just one of the guns that I carry. So I fell in the carry optics division. I think all the divisions are awesome. <laughs> um, 
sometimes it's fun. And you can shoot in multiple divisions. Like you don't have to pick one. Uh, yeah, you can hop between divisions, but they do. Some of them have different rules, like between open and carry optics. Like if you can have a magnet in a specific spot or like how many, where your pouches have to sit and this and that. So just brush up on what's kosher for your division and yeah, and just get out there. And I've adjusted my belt 8 million times since I started competing. I've moved my mag pouches <laughs> around a bunch of times. Um, you'll learn like as you go kind of what feels comfortable. And as you dry fire, like in practice, like where you like to draw your mags from, like what feels natural and good. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's never like a, this is the exact correct way to set up your gear. Like you're going to change your stuff a million times as you go. Absolutely. And then I guess go compete and try Heck it out. Yeah. Um, something, yeah. <laughs> something I, I'm glad I've had the ability and opportunity to do is, is train with someone who is uh, a seasoned competitive shooter. So um, I drive about three hours and go train with him. Uh, before that I had reached out to quite a few people in the area and all of them said, you know, I'm not familiar with competition shooting. I wouldn't know what to tell you, but we can work on like basic marksmanship and movement and shooting. Um, if I hadn't found Keith of TFI, I probably would have gone to some of those movement and just marksmanship things. Um, luckily I was able to work with him and, um, start on some, some very fun fundamental things. So we started with marksmanship, moved to gun handling, and then on to movement shooting. And those three like core practices have really laid the foundation for um, these matches. And there's a huge difference. I feel a huge difference in like just competency between each match. Every time I train with him, I feel more competent and then I feel therefore more confident and it makes the whole process just a lot uh, smoother. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you can find someone and you can afford it, you know, to train under someone who's seasoned and to like build some good, like positive habits in the beginning, instead of having to like maybe undo them later, if that's something you can do, that's great. Um, I know Lisa, you train with someone at your work and you guys kind of like push each other. Do you want to like, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, my shooting partner Noah is super awesome. Um, he's 19 and, is like a freak of nature and is quickly becoming very, very good at competition shooting. Um, my, my boss chip will shoot with us too. He's kind of how you were talking. He's more comfortable teaching. Um, he is very like tactically trained and is incredible with gun handling marksmanship, but competition is not his forte. So, um, he's not the person we're going to go to for, you know, competition specific training. So I actually haven't taken any competition specific classes, but it's really nice to have, and neither has Noah, but it's really nice to have somebody who kind of has similar goals in competitive shooting. Um, there's so many resources out there, um, like books and YouTube videos, as long as they come from instructors that actually like know what they're doing. <laughs> um, to right. have like a right. buddy to watch those with, you know, pick up important drills. I'll ask for dry fire drills from just other guys that go compete and to just like take those and implement them in your dry fire and your live fire. That's been super, super, super helpful for me. Yeah. Um, one day yeah, I would love absolutely. to take competition classes. I just, like I said, broke grad student one day, <laughs> but I've learned so much right. from the other people I compete with. Um, I read a lot of books, you know, on shooting, um, and I take those drills and I go to the range and I do them, <laughs> or I go to my living room and I dry fire them. And just as long as you're like consistent and diligent with your training, I mean, it is so, so helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing that. I know we're about at time. So if you want to go, if we want to go ahead and kind of wrap it up here, is there anything you want to send the listeners off with? Oh my gosh, I could say so many things. Uh, um, I want to say one thing about you. How many competitions have you shot in so far? 
three. Okay, because you were just you were just talking about um, why am I nervous? Your training. <laughs> no, 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 no. You were just talking about your training. The whole time I was um, like listening to you, I was like, yeah, you know, there is really something to be said about like learning those skills in the proper way from people that know what they're talking about. Because I have seen a lot of brand new like competition shooters come and shoot their first competitions and you've like absolutely blown me away like your movements are so smooth like you just do you look very fluid and natural out there and it is very obvious that you take your training seriously and you've been doing a really good job with that so I just want to say huge kudos to you um awesome awesome work I love that you take your training seriously that you're promoting that other people take their training seriously because it is so important for safety and competence so yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That means the world to me. And I couldn't have done it without your encouragement. And also you have walked me through multiple, multiple stages. So <laughs> thank, you. thank you for helping me. Just thank you. Cause it could be, you could so easily just focus on yourself um, and be like, you know, I'm not in the place to kind of like take anyone on or help anyone, but you chose to help me. So thank you. Of course. And my pleasure. Literally best time ever. And I've made such an amazing lifelong friend out of it. And it makes competitions more fun. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. I'm glad to hear that seriously. Cause I definitely felt, especially at the first time I came to your match, I was like asking you questions and you were like, Oh, I'm up. And like, you didn't get to run through your stage before. And then you were like, Oh, it's fine. Like I, you know, I, I got it. And like, you're just such you're so kind the whole time. And you're, I, I know I don't know enough to give a very thought out a compliment, but I do, I have seen you progress from the three matches I've at least been at with you, whether or not I was competing. Um, it's, it's been cool to see also your mental process. You're good at letting, you know, if you don't shoot well, you're good at letting it go. And then just like crushing the next stage, like that mental preparedness and like mat- mental, um, stability is going to make you as such a, such a competitor, you know, like other than, you know, already being a, in the competition shooting realm, but actually being, competitive like that's yeah, yeah that's go really super important far. it's gonna be watch. mindset yeah. is so key but yeah. yeah thank you for saying that that's yay <laughs> I love it I try to be, I try to be. and I would <laughs> oh no, no no go ahead go ahead <laughs> I was just gonna say I I I have to work on I mean like mental focus and getting in a good mindset while competing is super super like it's it's so easily overlooked because it's not like a tangible thing but it is so important right. so yeah I mean that's super key also absolutely and I know you have to go to your work now so I'm gonna yep, let you I'm get off and train. just sign off <laughs> Uh, for exclusive video content of this conversation with Lisa, you can become a Patreon. You'll receive a thank you note and podcast stickers along with more exclusive content. I'm actually about to send out the holiday cards with some new stickers in there. So I'm really excited for that. So look out for that. Patreons, visit the She Shield Instagram at She Shield Pod and TikTok at She Shield Pod for pictures of your guest speakers and podcast highlights. Thank you to Sageta Gear, the official sponsor of She Shield. For concealed carry gear and duty gear, you can use code She Shield 10 for 10% off your Sageta gear order. And to support the pod, um, you can like, share, and turn on your notifications and leave a review. In the meantime, thank you for listening and stay safe and stay vigilant. Bye!